to my kitchen. I'm going to take you on a tour and I am so excited to show you where all the cooking magic happens. So this is where my family and I do a lot of cooking, baking, crafting, we do it all in this space. Um, this is an old house. It was built in 1922 and it's been owned by a couple of families and I think we are the fourth or fifth family to actually live here. Um, and we've lived here for the last eight, nine years, my husband Kenton and our three children. So I can't wait to show you where all the magic happens. Um, we've done a lot of renovation. Everything in this kitchen was changed pretty much, except for the upper cabinets because they were in decent shape. But everything else had to go. And we're still not finished. There's still quite a few things that I'd like to complete. But you know what? There's no better day than today to show you. So I know I enjoy tours and this is not me showing off. This is just me sharing my space, my personal space with you and I hope you enjoy it and come along. <laughs> When you come into the kitchen, this is your view. Uh, it's a very wide opening. Uh, to your left, this way, is the breakfast room and to the right goes to the garden and into the rest of the house. Um, and please be, uh, please be sure to check out my other videos or other tours of the space. Okay, so we're gonna start here and um, in this corner, I just thought I would show you some cake that I made. And no, this isn't real cake, but it looks yummy, doesn't it? Yeah, these are dummy cakes that I made. Um, and I often show people as a way to demonstrate what uh, the possibilities are. So this is one uh, that I've made a few times for baby showers. And you've probably seen this. It's called a bump cake. Uh, baby bump cake. Uh, this is one and all of this is made with gum paste flowers um, and fondant and I pretty much taught myself how to do this. Um, my aunt who lives in England made my wedding cake. It was the most beautiful cake I'd seen and so I decided when I got older that I was going to try to figure out how to make this. So you come in my kitchen, uh, on this backsplash is a um, simple tile. I wanted to keep it simple and we got this at Lowe's. It's actually um, almost like a subway tile but we decided to get it with a beveled edge so it kind of reflects light. Um, and then above I have wall to ceiling. Um, cabinets that go all the way up and I actually to be honest don't even use those top cabinets um, or if we do we have to get on a step ladder so you'll see I have hanging um, Christmas ornaments that are food related uh, below you see I have some rum and this rum this is a huge bottle uh, Maya's Jamaican rum and this I think Kenton has had a few um, and this is how I soak the fruit okay so on this corner I just wanted to show you some inspirational books that I keep we have tons of cooking books Kenton and I love to keep um, or collect books and this one is the Latin chick I love this when we're having you know any parties or get-togethers um, is really a wealth of information in here. Um, I just love it. I love cookbooks. Um, if you're like me, you might, you probably do. This one I really like too, The Well-Decorated Cake by Toba Garrett. Uh, she's an African-American um, baker and uh, amazing uh, information in here. Okay, another 
cake guru, of course, is um, Sylvia Weinstock. And um, anyone who wants or is interested in cake baking, I would say she is also pretty much the gold standard. So I go through these books and when I have free time, this is where I learn um, all the little tricks. Um, and for those of you um, who also appreciate Southern food, um, I actually do like Paula Dean. Now for all of those Paula Dean haters, please don't come for me. Um, I know she says some crazy stuff, but to be honest, she is still a talented um, business person uh, with great style. And whenever I want some Southern inspiration, I go to Paula Dean. So don't judge me. Another professional cake decorating book. Um, this one was uh, a really nice. So, as you can see, you get the point. I love cake books and um, this is just a small sample, small, tiny sample of some of the books we collect. Okay, so heading this way, uh, this door leads to, this door leads to the mudroom and we bought this from Lowe's. I still haven't painted it to match the rest of the kitchen. We want to paint it white. Um, we'll get to that some other time. On this side of the kitchen, I have these stools. They kind of give off an industrial feel. I like them. They remind me of New York, um, and they're easy to move that uh, and move it across to this stainless steel island. So I often sit up here to read a book or to go over uh, a recipe that I have. Um, and since I'm focused on this side, I will go ahead and tell you, so this is a stainless steel table that I got from Sam's Club and it's extremely handy. Um, I've been able to put some extra appliances, there's a rotisserie. The red KitchenAid was my grandpa's, he died two years ago and he, uh, every year he would uh, bring us black cake for our birthdays, so we really miss him. Uh, I also have some cutting boards and this, if you are Asian or if you frequent Asian restaurants, you will recognize that that is a steamer. Uh, you can steam dumplings, you can steam vegetables with it. Okay, I'm going to swing back here and I hope I don't make you dizzy. Um, there are the stools. I have a few books here, some more books. Um, that I really enjoy. Jerk from Jamaica. You know, we are Jamaican, or my family is uh, half Jamaican, and of course we have the Asian Grill, um, and uh, you might be aware that Kenton is half Asian. He's actually Vietnamese, or his mother, sorry, was Vietnamese, um, and his father is American from Nebraska. All right, back to my kitchen. So I have a plethora of cabinets. More cabinets than I need from the ceiling to down here. And uh, I'm not gonna open them up because these cabinets are not what you see on cribs where everything is neatly arranged. Um, I will open this one just to give you an idea. Um, the kids go in this cabinet a lot. And um, on this side, I keep a lot of my spices because I don't really have a designated spice cabinet, so I use this space instead. And we have all kinds of things in here, like garlic powder, of course. This is Spanish hot. Uh, this is some Cajun seasoning. Um, we cook all kinds of food, some cinnamon, um, some hoisin sauce. So, eating in my house means that you're going to travel all over the world because I don't cook specifically African food or American food or Asian food. We cook food that is inspired by our travels. And, all right, so on this side, 
I have uh, my little pig. Um, and I'm not really a fond of the pig per se. I don't really eat pork like that, but Kenton um, does eat pork and I, it's actually a butter dish. I just thought it was really cute. Um, your standard canisters, I often have sugar in there or tea. Uh, I am a tea drinker. Kenton drinks coffee and so we do have a coffee maker here. Uh, but I really don't drink coffee because the caffeine, I'm a wimp. Caffeine gives me palpitations. So I don't drink um, coffee or black or dark sodas like Coke and Pepsi because I will get palpitations. In this corner, I have this uh, glass container and I often keep garlic in it, comes in handy. Um, there I have my utensils. I like to cook with wooden utensils or um, uh, this material, um, which you will find everywhere uh, because it doesn't scratch the pots. Here I have my fruit and um, like any Caribbean household or African household, we have plantain and this is not bad. It looks really dark but it's actually just ripe. This is about the time to fry them up. Um, also have some grapefruit, some bananas, which I make smoothies with. Um, on this side of the kitchen, I have a very tall, narrow window flanking um, the hood. And I like little miniature things. And so I have a little miniature rose here. Um, with a little birdie. Here we have this little tangine. It's a miniature tangine as you can see. Um, it's just here to inspire me to one day go to Morocco. So I would love to go to Morocco one day and so I keep this little tangine uh, as inspiration and in it I keep the top of my pressure cooker. Now Above my hood and all the way up to the ceiling, I have these amazing Moroccan tiles, which from a distance don't look really big, but they are actually very large and very textured. So I love this. I wanted uh, an interesting um, ethnic look or touch to my kitchen, and these Moroccan tiles were perfect. So, um, I got them online. I found an online company that had Moroccan tiles. Can I show you how beautiful and large these tiles are close up? They're huge. They're 8 by 8 inches and they're uh, shiny and textured um, and beautiful. And I think all handmade in Morocco. You want to see what's in my cabinets and drawers? Okay, so right next to the stove is some oil. And in this corner, we have a lot of my everyday baking supplies. Over here, I have our knives and cleavers. And of course here we have your cutlery, standard cutlery. And I love these drawers because they're the soft touch. I also have some chopsticks there. Um, below we have some large appliances. And I think Ken has the rice here. I'm not really sure why. We do have a pantry. Oh, here's the box to that spiralizer I wanted to show you. Um, so this is the company and it's an amazing product um yeah where's the label okay well i guess yeah if i wanted to find them this is the label i would use for the spiralizer uh it's really cool corner on the left side of my stove um we have you know plastic wrap parchment paper foil stuff like that 
Um, in this drawer, I have all the small lids, which we realize is that we hold less space when you keep the pots separate from the lids. So that's the large lids, the small lids. And in this corner, I have all my pots, big pots. Uh, I love cooking for large groups of people. Um, I think here we have all the plastic because, you know, when you have leftovers and you have children, you need some plastic containers. Here I have some baking supplies. Uh, my husband is like major into gadgets, small gadgets. You know, you need a pit removal. You need a, a zester. You need a juicer. Got it here. Another drawer for small gadgets, and I really need to come in here and make this a little neater. But this is real life. <laughs> yeah, I think I have another drawer also for more uh, baking supplies here. Um, more baking supplies in this drawer, and there's a scale for when I weigh my supplies, cookie cutter. Above, I have this hood, um, and uh, this I got online also, ordered online, and it works pretty well. Um, let's see, let's put on the light. Yeah, not that much, but. Okay, so below us, of course, is our stove. And what you will notice is that on each side of the stove, there is a space. And that is because I am yet to replace the stove with the appropriate size stove. So this is your standard stove that you find in most people's homes, but I have the space um, allocated for a 36 inch stove. So I couldn't decide whether I wanted a commercial stove or whether I wanted a pro stove. So if you have any insight, let me know. Pros and cons of a pro style stove versus a commercial stove. Okay, on this side, <clears throat> I have another pot rest. And um, here's my little, should I say male chicken? <laughs> yes. And this was from Macy's uh, many years ago. Um, I have a little plant over here and in that corner is my kitchen, KitchenAid Professional 600. And this baby helps me make all my amazing cakes. I have made so many um, Christmas cakes with this great machine, love it. In this corner here, I have a spiralizer, it's called, spiralizer, and Kenton loves using this thing. We make, instead of spaghetti, a healthy alternative is to make um, zucchini noodles, and it's there's so many things you can do with that. I have in this corner a rice cooker, and this is a very small rice cooker, because we used to use a really big one, and we were eating way too much starch, way too much rice. My kids think you didn't eat if you didn't eat rice. So instead, we decided to get this little miniature one so that it would only be sufficient for the kids and Ketan and I could avoid eating rice. Okay, and if I step back a little bit, you can see. Um, I'm going to open this cabinet. This huge cabinet is where we keep all our plates and dishes and I love um, Japanese earthware. I love their bowls. I think they're so pretty. So we have a lot of Asian inspired plates and dishes and again that goes all the way to the ceiling really tall. Um, this little uh, hanging, I guess, piece of ceramic was a gift from a nurse when I moved from New York. Um, she gave this to me, so I've always kept this. Um, I lived in New York and we were moving to the south, so she told me that the pineapple was the uh, southern 
symbol for hospitality and hence she gave that to me. Okay, so if I step back a little bit, um, one feature I love about this kitchen are these huge tall windows uh, and they go all the way up and I love looking out of this window, watching the seasons change, um, looking out at the dogwood tree. Granite here we got from this small business in Fayetteville. And because this kitchen is really long, uh, we needed a lot of granite and it would have been way too expensive for us to uh, have gone to Lowe's or Home Depot. So this uh, was the best thing we figured out to do. And they were an amazing company, um, amazing business, and they also helped us uh, decide what sink to get. And I wanted two compartments. What used to be here was a very old sink that had three compartments, including a garbage disposal that didn't work. Um, also decided on a very simple, uh, but fair, very functional faucet. And I love the fact that you know, it can turn into a spray and it can turn into, um, you know. I also wash, of course, my big pots here, everything. So looking at my window uh, ledge, I have some miniature crabs. They're actually a salt and pepper shaker that I got in uh, South Carolina. I like to collect little miniature things that remind me of our travels. This. For those of you that collect china, uh, you'll appreciate that this is the Old Country Rose uh, Royal Albert um, china. And I like this here because I often put flowers in it. And on this side, I have some cake stands. Um, in this cake stand is actually an, a Christmas ornament, another Christmas set of ornaments that I think, you know, it's so beautiful. Why lock them away? Uh, and wait till Christmas just to see them. When it comes to food and ornaments, I just think, you know what? I want to enjoy it every day. Um, I want to show it off, not necessarily to anybody else, but I want to show it off to myself. It makes me smile, so why not? All right, this is a tiered cake stand, and I like it. I got this from Belks, I believe. I like the sort of vintage uh, look and feel it has. Above that area is a cabinet that I keep all my glasses, um, mugs. It's a very tall cabinet. You can see if I move back. And um, on the handle I have some other miniatures. This is a miniature teapot. It's so cute. I got this from my grandma. Um, and this is a little miniature cupcake and she is so cute okay so as I pointed out this is where I keep all my glasses and my mugs I'm just gonna move back because it keeps going um, I love China mugs I just love the texture of them and these little floral ones are so beautiful. You see my step ladders and this is what I use to climb up to the top to get to all these cabinets. Um, on my refrigerator, which is a Kenmore Elite, which we got from Sears, um, we have some lanterns. Uh, here in North Carolina or in the small town in North Carolina, the power often goes out just like it would in Africa. And so you need your lanterns accessible. And so there's mine. I also have some on the floor uh, in that corner underneath the table. So what you see there is a radio that I usually have on when I'm cooking. And in the corner there's some lanterns. And magnets, yeah. So on the fridge, I have all these magnets, um, different places I've been, Ketan and I and the kids, New York so many times because of course we are from New York and our family lives in New York. North Carolina, isn't this a cool magnet? And um, the North Carolina Aquarium, Chinatown in San Francisco. I went there once for a medical conference. 
Key West. We went there um, just last Christmas. <laughs> Cornell, my alma mater, St. Joseph, New York State of Mind, my baby Kareem, and he is now 15 years old. I can't believe it. Um, Charleston, where I went to med school. San Diego, California.